Good day! This is Pastor Dominique from Evander Revival Center. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to a word from the Lord that I know is going to bless you. I've got worship music on you, just enjoying the presence of God. And it is for me such a privilege and an honor to bring the word of God to you on this social media platform. Although we can't meet in person right now, I want to tell you, we can meet in the spirit. And where one, sorry, where two or more are gathered in his name, so shall it be. God's presence will be there. And that's all we need to do. We can manifest God's presence right now via Facebook. So while you're coming online, please drop a comment down below. Please take the time to share this word. Let's get the word of God out as far as possible. Uh, I'm going to start going into the word in a few minutes. I just want to wait for people to come online. We're going to spend this morning time in the word. We're going to spend time in prayer and we're going to have a good time in the presence of God. Amen. Well, I just want to greet so far Madeleine Nordia. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. It's good to see that you're online. Madeleine Nordia, welcome to all of you that are coming online. I want to quickly greet the rest of you. Welcome Mandy Mayer. Welcome Veronica Lewitz. Welcome Joey Ulefi. Amen. Come on, let's take the time to share the word of God. Amen. I'm going to take the time also to share this word. Welcome Quibi Steinfart. It's good to see that you're online. So good to see that you're online today. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm so excited to be alive. It is a good time to be alive. It is a good time to be a Christian. It's a good time that we are living in because it's in times like this that we can manifest the light of God. So you that are you that is a born again Christian, you, you, you are called to be light in darkness. And this is where we have got effect is in dark times. Welcome, Michael. Buerta. It's good to see that you're online. I trust that you're doing well, Michael. Lizelle Bates, welcome. It's good to see that you're online. Amen. Welcome to everyone. It's good to see everybody coming online. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Helian. Van Lochenberg, it's good to see that you're online. Welcome, Marty Schizzerotto, it's good to see that you're online. Welcome to all of you. Amen. We're going to have a good time. I've got a word that I want to share with you that's going to bless you this morning. You just don't want to, you don't want to miss this word. It's going to have impact and it's going to be something that you can actually apply to your own personal life. In fact, it's going to be a challenge. And I want to challenge you this morning. Welcome, Naleen. It's good to see that you're online. I trust that Fred is doing well. Amen. 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 We're about to get into the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. As I've asked, if you come online, please drop a comment down below. Um, once I'm finished ministering the word of God, I actually want to take time to pray. I want to pray for every single person that has got a prayer request this morning. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to stand in the gap for one another. We're going to believe for God to move in each other's lives. And we're going to have a good time this morning. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Lisa. It's good to see you. Yes, welcome family. We are family. Welcome Pastor Yolanda. I'm so grateful that you've come online. Welcome Gert. It's good to see that you're online. Welcome Lisa Kriya. Jody Kriya. Welcome my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
you see that for me through the senses. Welcome, welcome. I see we've got more people. Adeline Stein, welcome. It's good to see that you're online. Madre, Madre Potica, welcome. Thank you for coming online. Welcome. Renee Stofberg, welcome. Marty Miller, welcome. Gerd Krik, it's good to see that you're online. I trust that you're doing well. Peter Grief, welcome. It's good to see all of you online. Mari De Beer, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Amen. Amen. It's 11 o'clock at night in Canada and you're taking the time to watch. So it is Saturday evening in Canada, but you're going to go into your Sunday with a word from the Lord. Madre. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word of God. I'm so excited to get into the word of God. I'm telling you, I've got a revelation on my heart and it is burning on my heart. And I want to share this word with you because I believe more than ever, what I'm going to speak about, we need to apply, we need to live out as Christians, as born again believers. And I want to share this word with you today. So today I'm going to the book of 2 Kings and I'm going to be in chapter 4. Now before I go there, I just want to challenge every single one of you as born again believers, you that is coming online, if Jesus said we are to be light, what does that mean? Light expels darkness. John chapter 1, the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was the light of men and that light manifest, manifested in such a way that the darkness could not comprehend it. Now, it is speaking about Genesis chapter 1, how God in the midst of darkness, He said, let there be light. God did not speak about the darkness. He declared light in the midst of darkness. So what I'm trying to say is as born again believers who've been made in the image of God, who have been called chosen by God, washed in the blood of Jesus, we are to declare light in darkness. We are not to speak about the darkness, but we are to declare the light. And when we do that, that is when we see the power of God manifest. That is when we see light begin to manifest that God intended us to be. So we cannot be in the world, one foot in the world and one foot in God's kingdom. No, we have to be all out for God. And that's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and the rest shall be added unto you. In other words, make God a priority and everything else will fall into place. And when you make God a priority and when He is your priority and when you put Him first in your decision making, in everything that you do, that is where you will discover the kingdom of God. You will find provision. You will find the goodness of God. You will find abundance. Do you want that? Well, it starts by putting God first. But come on, let's be light in darkness. Let us spread light. I want to ask you, with everything you do, every word you speak, every approach you have, everything you do as a person, are you spreading light or are you spreading darkness? We've got enough darkness. We've got enough negativity. We've got enough pain and suffering and disappointment in this world. We need to be the difference as Christians, as born again believers. We need to be the difference. So I want to challenge you. Be the difference. And it's right now where we can be the difference. You know, it is easy to shine our light when everything is going well. It's another thing entirely to shine your light when nothing is going well. That is when your light has got impact, purpose. So if you want God to use you in a significant way, He's going to use you in the midst of darkness. I remember there was a time I was ministering for a person and I was ministering for this person to staff that was working in a bar. Now, I take the gospel wherever, wherever I can. And if that means I need to go to a pub and preach the gospel, then so be it. Guess what? There are souls that need Jesus in that pub. And I would go every single week and preach in this pub. And this person that arranged this preaching engagement for me one day complained and said, uh, they don't want to work here anymore. They don't want to work here anymore. They want to they work in the church. They want to be used of God. 
and they had this person precious soul had well-meaning intentions i understood perfectly what this person said uh, a precious child of god but what i encouraged them was this is where you can have the most impact yes it's good to want to serve god in the church but you can have an impact right here in the pub who needs jesus it's the sinners it's those that are lost and it's them that we need to impact so when they come in, you have got the opportunity, the privilege to preach the gospel to them. I want to tell you, where you are, God has planted you as a missionary right there. Don't think you're going to have to go to the Amazon to preach the gospel to become a missionary or go to the Middle East or to China or to one of these Eastern countries that forbid the gospel to become a missionary to have impact in God's kingdom. No, God wants you to be a missionary right there where you are in your community. God wants you to be a missionary to your neighbors. God wants you to be a missionary to the people that stay around you. So start where you are, shine your light in the midst of darkness. And I'm telling you, you will see God work through you in a significant way. So I just want to challenge you with that thought because I was thinking about it this week. We so, so many Christians are not spreading light like they should. They are spreading darkness, spreading negativity. So with every WhatsApp, with every message, with every social media platform, choose to be light, choose to spread light, choose to spread hope, choose to encourage, choose to build up people's faith. Come on. Be somebody that builds others up and not tear them down. There's enough of that. We need to be the difference. And I believe you that is watching, you have been called to be the difference. You see, that's why I'm a pastor. I'm a minister of the gospel. Not only to show people the way to the cross, but also to encourage them to live from the cross and to live for God and make an impact in their world. And my greatest desire is to see you fulfill the dreams the plans that God has got for your life. Because for me, that is my win. Is when you become all that God has called you to be. Amen. So thank you so much for coming online. Taking this time with me on this Sunday morning. This very cold Sunday morning. It's minus one year in Evander. I don't know what are the what is the temperature there by you. But let me tell you, it's warm in our hearts and we're going to be on fire for Jesus even in these cold days that we are experiencing right now. Do you agree with me? Just say Amen. Okay, come on, let's go to the Word of God. And we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 4. And before I read the Word of God, can I ask you just to stand in a, a agreement with me in prayer? It doesn't have to be a physical posture, but I mean stand in agreement. Be in agreement with me. Come on, let's join our hearts together and let's agree that God will bless this word and that this word will have impact right this morning while we are spending time on this social media platform. Father God, we come to you today as born again believers. Lord, we are excited for the times that we are living in for right now. This is where our faith has got impact. This is where we, Lord Father God, thrive as Christians. It's in times such as this but lord we pray this morning that you lord father god would speak to us in a very divine way that the word of god will go forth that it will not return void that it will have power that it will have purpose that it will penetrate our hearts i pray lord father god open up our hearts and do a work within us lord father god this morning challenge us to come up higher holy spirit convict us where we need to change and I pray this morning, O oh God, that you would illuminate the scriptures, that we will see what you want us to see. Make me your mouthpiece and bless this word, for you are the ultimate authority. You are sovereign. You are the creator and judge of heaven and earth, the alpha and the omega. There was none before you. There will be none after you. And you are our God, our fortress, the one in whom we will trust. So, Lord, we agree right now, even via the social media platform, for this word to be blessed. Bless this service this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm going to be reading this morning out of the Amplified Translation. Now, I like the Amplified Translation because it 
expands the scripture. It expands what was said in the original text. And this morning, the way this story is translated for us in the Amplified Version, it has so much meaning for me, but it also brought so much revelation to me in this week. Now listen to what the Bible says. Now there came a day when Elijah went to Shunem. There was a prominent and an influential woman and she persuaded him to eat a meal. Afterward, whenever Elijah passed by, he stopped there for a meal. She said to her husband, Behold, I sense that this is a holy man of God who frequently passes our way. Please let us make a small, fully walled upper room on the housetop and put a bed in there for him with a table, a chair, a lampstand. And whenever he comes to visit us, he can turn in there. Verse 11. One day Elijah came there and he turned into the upper room and he laid down to rest. And Elijah said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shemanite. So he called her and she stood before him. Verse 13. Now Elijah said to Gehazi, say to her now, you've gone to all of this trouble for us. What can we do for you? What would you like? To be mentioned to the king or to the captain of the army? She answered, I live among my own people in peace and in security and need no special favors. Later, Elijah said, What then is to be done for her? So Gehazi, his servant, answered and said, Well, she has no son and her husband is old. So Elijah said, Call her. So Gehazi called her and she came and she stood in the doorway. Where did she stand? In the doorway. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 15. Elijah said, At this season next year, you will embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord. O man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But... The woman conceived and gave birth to a son at the season, the very next year, just as Elijah said to her. Man, the word of God is rich. I love the word of God. When we look at the story, we see how Elijah has traveled to a city with the name Shunem. It is an ancient city. Shunem. He's there in the city. The Bible says it's there in the city that he meets a woman. Not just any woman, but a very influential woman. The Bible says she was a prominent woman. And as you read the story, you come to understand that she was also a wealthy woman. So this was a woman who had status. This was a woman that had influence on her community and the people around her. And if you read as well further, you'll discover she also had influence even on her own husband. But what I love about this woman, even though we do not know her name, we know that she stays in Shunem in the scripture, is that she saw that Elijah was passing by. She kept seeing that he was passing by and she, the Bible says, persuaded him to come into her home. She persuaded him. She persuaded him. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 9, she tells her husband, I sense that this is a holy man of God. I sense that this is a holy man of God. In other words, I sense the anointing upon his life. I sense that God's hand is upon his life. This woman was not just wealthy, prominent, and influential, but she was sensitive 
to the Holy Spirit. She was sensitive to the anointing and she was able to recognize the anointing and she had respect for the anointing. So much so that she invited Elijah, who symbolizes God's presence in the script, who symbolizes the Holy Ghost. She invites him into her home. Now, we as born again believers can take it for granted that just because we serve God, just because we've given our hearts to Jesus, that God will move in our lives as we please. But I want to tell you, God is a gentleman. And he needs to be invited. He needs to be persuaded to move into our lives. I want to ask you, have you invited the Holy Ghost into your home this morning? Have you invited him into your work circumstances? Have you invited him into your family, into your marriage? You need to invite him. You need to welcome him. You need to persuade him to come. Now, one translation of the word persuade is to beg with urgency or to plead with urgency let me say that again one translation of the word persuade is to beg with urgency or to plead with urgency and the bible says that she persuaded elijah to come into her home she persuaded him she had an urgency to have him in her home. She didn't want him just to pass by. No, 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 no. He had to come into her home. She was desperate. And I want to tell you where you are desperate, where you are urgent that God should move. God will manifest himself there. We as born again believers, as Christians, I want to tell you, you that is watching, you need to have an urgency to welcome God into your midst. You need to show him hospitality. You need to show him respect. I say that because there's a danger in becoming familiar with the anointing. There's a danger in becoming familiar with God's presence. Now, I can testify to this fact because I have made this mistake where I have become familiar towards God's presence. I, as a pastor, one day we were in a church service at one of my church services that we have on a Sunday and we were worshiping God and the presence of God was there. And guess where my head was? My head was on, oh, I've got to preach this and oh, I've got to say this and oh, I've got to not forget about that person's birthday and I've got to greet that person who's come back from holiday. And as I'm doing that, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, do not become familiar with me. Do not become casual in my presence. I want to have intimacy with you because if you could become urgent and desperate, I can touch you. And it was at that point where I had to repent and say, Lord, sorry that my mind is on other things and I'm coming with this casual attitude towards worship, just casually lifting up my hands, just going through the motions, becoming familiar. And I had to repent. But when I became urgent and when I invited God to touch me, that's when I felt his presence. That's where I felt the manifest presence of God. I want to tell you, God will not manifest himself where he is tolerated. He will manifest himself where he is celebrated. I want to say that again because it's a powerful statement. It's not just a cliche, but it is powerful. God will manifest himself, not where he's tolerated, but where he is celebrated. And when we celebrate God and when we've got our hearts turned towards him and we've, when we've got an urgency for him, God cannot help but manifest himself. This woman persuaded Elijah to come in. The Bible says that he frequently passed by her home frequently and she was not content that he was just going to pass by no 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 no. he had to come into a home he had to come and sit down and have a meal she wanted to be a blessing to him and i want to challenge you don't let god pass you by don't let god pass you by in this time don't let god pass you by in this week don't let god pass you by in this moment no you've got to grab a hold of god Place a demand on the anointing. Say, God, here I am. I need you. I want you. I'm desperate for you. 
touch me, change me, do what you have to, but I'm hungry for you. It reminds me of the scripture in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to verse 34, where the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says she had a condition of 12 years. For 12 years she had suffered with a condition. She had an affliction. And for 12 years while she was suffering, the Bible says that one day she heard that Jesus was passing by. And the Bible says she said to herself, that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And while Jesus was passing by, she stretched forth in the midst of a crowd on her knees while she was crawling. And she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the Bible says that the miracle working power, the healing power of Jesus was withdrawn right out of his body. So much so that he immediately stopped and he said, who touched me? Just by the way, everybody was touching Jesus because... Peter was quick to tell Jesus, what you're talking about, everybody's touching you. And Jesus said, no, somebody drew the miracle working power right out of me. In other words, somebody touched me with faith. Somebody put a demand on the anointing. Somebody is not going to allow me just to pass by. In that story, we see how there were people all around Jesus. There were people that wanted to see Jesus. There were people that wanted to talk to Jesus. But there was somebody, just one person in that crowd that was urgent for Jesus, that had faith that if she could just touch him, she would be made whole. And I want to ask you, are you urgent? Are you desperate? Are you desperate that God can come through for you in your finances, in your work situation? Are you desperate enough that God can touch that child that needs him, that needs to come to salvation? When you become urgent and when you say, I'm not going to let God just pass me by. I'm not going to just let the anointing pass me by. No, I'm going to grab a hold of it because I'm going to place a demand on it. I'm telling you, you will see the power of God manifest in your life. You will make a withdrawal from heaven. And I'm telling you, there is power when we've got faith and we place a demand on the anointing. But the Bible says that the woman went to her husband in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Shumanite woman, she went to her husband and she said to her husband, let us make a room. <laughs> let us make a room. A fully walled upper room on the housetop. And let's put a bed, a table, a chair and a lampstand. In other words, let's build him a room. On top of our house. And let's put objects in there. She said four objects specifically. She persuaded him first to come into her home. That's what she first did. And she was enjoying his presence, Elijah's presence. She was enjoying the anointing. But then she got to a point where she was not content with a visitation. No, 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 no. She took it one step further. She said, no, we need to have a habitation. He can't just come by and visit. No, no, no. I want him to stay here. I want the presence in my house. I want the anointing in my house. You see, she took it to another level. She took her relationship with God to another level. And I want to tell you, every single one of us need to come to that point. We need to go to a new level with God where we're not content with a visitation, but we want a habitation. There's so much Christians, even myself, I'm speaking about myself, that are content to go to prayer meetings, that are content to go to church services, that are content even to watch a live service like this. And it's good and well to do all those things. But I'm telling you, God doesn't just want to move over a live Facebook feed like this. God doesn't want to just move in a prayer meeting or in a cell group meeting or in a church service or in a revival service. No, 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 no. God wants to move while you are in the shower. He wants to touch you right there in your shower. He wants to be with you while you're washing your dishes. He wants to be with you while you're driving to work. You can have revival wherever you are if you could just become aware of God's presence and be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Ghost. This woman wanted a habitation. She wanted him. She didn't want to just have him come visit. She wanted to build a wall, a room for him. Now that's wealth. <laughs> Think about that. She wasn't content with just preparing a room, you know, just getting a nice bed for him. And No, she had to build him a room. Build him a room. There's nothing that says you are wealthy like you just build a room. You just do construction on your house because you want to. 
But that's what she did. She had wealth. She was gifted with the ability to give. She worked her gift. And as she worked her gift to sow, to sacrifice, to take the time to build the room, guess what happened? All of a sudden she had a habitation. All of a sudden the anointing started habitating in her home. She gave room to God in her home. She made room for God. I want to ask you, have you made room for God? Have you made room for God to move in your life? Have you made room for God in your home? Have you made room for God in your marriage? Have you made room for God in your job? Or are you just content with a visitation? What about a habitation? What about experiencing His presence constantly? You know, when I wake up in the mornings, nowadays I say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. When I go and I pray, and I start praying, I welcome the Holy Spirit. I welcome the presence of God. I invite Him. I want to show respect to Him. I want to be respectful towards His presence. I don't want to be casual. I don't want to be familiar, but I want to enjoy Him. Child of God, don't you want to enjoy Him? Because where there is the presence of God, there's peace, there's joy. Man, there is fulfillment. There's contentment. There's nothing like just having the presence of God with you. But notice this woman took the time and the effort and she even took the finances to prepare a place for Elijah in her home. Salvation is for free. Salvation costs you nothing. The day you come to Jesus, you give your heart to Jesus, it's for free. But I want to tell you, the anointing it's not cheap. It's expensive. Right throughout the Bible, we are constantly challenged to seek God, to seek God, not just seek God, but seek him with all of our hearts. If we seek God with all of our hearts, we will find him. In fact, Jesus comes and says, you are to love God with all your mind, with all your heart and all your soul. You are to love God with your whole being. It is takes something to have the anointing. It costs a price to have the anointing. And I want to tell you, if you want God to come in, oftentimes something has to leave. Two things can't occupy the same space. If we want God to come in, then there are certain things that have to go. And I want to ask you, what are those things that have to go? You can't expect God to come in you can't expect love to come in. First John chapter 4 verse 8. God is love. You can't expect God to come into your life. Love to come into your home. You want him into your home. But you've got unforgiveness in your heart. Guess what? You have not made room for God. There's something else occupying that space. You need to give an eviction notice unto the devil. You need to give an eviction notice unto unforgiveness. And say listen there is no more room for you. Get out. And once one thing goes, the other thing can come. If you want God to move in a significant way in your life, it's going to have to start by you evicting some things out of your heart. One of the ways that you make room for God is by sowing, by giving. When you give and when you sow, you're making room for God to bless you. But some people want to harvest, but they've got no seed in the ground. You cannot expect to harvest and pray for harvest, but there's no seed in the ground. I want to tell you, even a farmer will tell you that that is lunacy. It's not going to work. You can't expect to reap something if you never sowed something. You will reap what you sowed. And if you want to harvest, sow a seed, not just financially, but with your energy, with your time. Then you make room for a harvest to come. Don't be so focused on your needs. I shouldn't always be focused on my needs. No, we need to look for where can we meet a need? Where can we sow? Where can we make room for God to move? I've learned the secret. In my time of need, I need to sow a seed. In my time of need, I need to sow a seed. And that gives room for God to move. That gives room for God to do something in my life. You see, this woman, when she built this room, when she sacrificed to build this room... She was placing a demand on God to bless her. 
You see, God is a provider in his nature. God is a provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that is more than enough. The Lord, my provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. So when this woman provided for the anointing, when she provided for Elijah, it caused God to bless her because God is a provider. And when you provide for him, when you bless him, he cannot help but in turn provide for you and bless you. And I want to tell you, you can never outgive God. You can try it, but it will never work. God will always bless you in a greater measure than what you bless him with. So when she blessed Elijah, when she made room for the anointing, all of a sudden the Bible says that Elijah started asking a question. How can we bless this woman? You see, Elijah had a godly characteristic. A godly characteristic that said, I cannot just be blessed, but I have to bless in return. I am blessed to be a blessing. I want to ask you, are you fertile ground? If somebody should sow their seed in your life, their time, their energy, their finances, is there a harvest that's going to come forth from you? I have to ask myself that question. Am I fertile ground? Am I fertile soil so that somebody else can get a harvest out of my life? If somebody's going to bless me, am I a blessing to them in return? And I know we can't always bless people in the way that they bless us. But let me tell you something. Sometimes the most powerful blessing that you can bless somebody with is prayer. To pray for them. To speak a blessing over them. Elijah didn't have a lot of money. He didn't have the money that this woman had. But he had the anointing of God upon his life. And he recognized that he has to be a blessing to her. I want to tell you, when you walk by the Spirit and when God moves in you, when He moves through you, you cannot help but bless those that have blessed you. We see this with David in 2 Samuel chapter 9. He's seated on the throne in Israel. And what does he do while he's seated on the throne? He's not seeking ways to rule and reign and make himself more important. No, the Bible says that he thought to himself, is there anybody from Saul's house who I can bless for Jonathan's sake? You see, David had so much of God on the inside of him that when he was on his throne, he just wanted to bless people. He wanted to bless somebody. We see this in Luke chapter 5 when Jesus was ministering the word of God and the crowds were gathered on the Sea of Galilee, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus looked to Peter and Peter said, take one of these boats. There were two boats. Take the boats. Preach from those boats. In other words, Peter took out of his business because he was a fisherman and he gave a platform unto Jesus so that Jesus could do the work of the Lord. And when he sowed out of his business, when he gave out of his business, when he gave unto the kingdom of God, God in turn had to bless him. There was a demand placed on the anointing. Peter did not even know it when he did it. He gave the boats to Jesus. Jesus ministered the word. The Bible says that when Jesus was finished with his ministry, he turned to Peter and he said, take your boats, go out deep and throw your nets on the other side. And Peter says, Master, we've been working all night. We have toiled and we have caught nothing. But at your word, we will do what you say. And when he obeyed the word of God and he went out deep and he threw out his nets, the Bible says he caught a great multitude of fish. So much so that he had to haul it up onto his boat. His boat began to sink. He hauled it up onto another boat and that boat began to sink. In one day, Peter came into prosperity and abundance. Why? He first blessed the kingdom of God. He first sowed into the kingdom of God. And in turn, God blessed him. What am I trying to tell you this morning? If you want God to bless you, you have to position yourself for that blessing. But oftentimes it means that you first have to be the blessing. There's so many times we pray for things when we should actually just position ourselves. Let me give you an example. We can oftentimes pray, God bless our family. But if you do what the word of God says, you don't even have to pray. It will just naturally happen that you will be blessed. Because Psalm 133 verse 3 says, where there is unity, God commands a blessing. So if you could just be of one heart, of one mind, if you could stand in unity as a family, when there is unity, the blessing will come. You don't even have to pray for it. The blessing will come. The Bible says there, God will pour out his blessing. 
You see, it is good to pray. It is good to ask. It is good to petition God. That is good. I want to challenge you to do that. But there's a level of faith where you position yourself that God just has to bless you. And it's not that he feels he must. It is that he wants to bless you because you've placed the demand on the anointing. You've placed the demand on him. This woman placed the demand on the anointing when she made room for the presence of God. When she made room for the man of God. And I love what happens. Elijah calls her and he says, is there anything I can do for you? Can I give a good word to you, to the king or to the general of the army? And this woman is so content in who she is. She says, no, I, I need no special favors. I've got everything I need. I'm content. I'm wealthy. I'm blessed. You see, from the outside to the natural human eye, it looked like she needed nothing. And even she said she needs nothing. But God knew the desires of her heart. I want to tell you, child of God, you might not say everything to everyone, but God knows what's happening in your heart. He knows what you need. He knows the desires of your heart. And when this woman took the light in making room for God, God gave her the desire of her heart. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You see, there was a desire, there was a need in her life that nobody knew about, but the servant of Elijah identified it, and Eli the servant of Elijah told Elijah that she's got no son, she's got no child, and her husband is old. In other words, it looks impossible that she will ever have children. And Elijah calls her, and he says to her, this time next year, you will be holding a baby boy. In other words, God has seen your desire. God, ha God has seen that need that you have. God has seen it. And God's going to bless you for it. Why? Because you have made room for God. In other words, when you make room for God, God will make room for you. I want to say that again. When you make room for God, God will make room for you. And what's God going to do? He's going to make room to bless you. He's going to create a space to bless you. He's going to make a way to bless you. Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible says, God speaking through the Apostle John. I've placed the door before you. An open door that no man can shut. I want to tell you, child of God, when God opens a door for you, when He gives you an opportunity, when He gives you breakthrough, no man, no devil, no demon, no evil spirit, no witch, no wizard, no nothing can ever stop God's plan for your life. You will be able to walk through that door with a peace of mind, with clarity in your heart. You will be able to possess the promises of God. You don't have to stress about what another person has or what another person does not have. When God opens the door for you, you will be able to walk through it. But it starts with you making room for God. The Bible says, listen to this. The Bible says, in verse, yeah, in this Bible, sorry, I'm just getting the scripture. The Bible says that this woman came and stood in the doorway. Second Kings chapter four, verse 15. This woman stood in the doorway. Think about this. She built that doorway. When did she build that doorway? When she made room for God, when she made room for Elijah, when she made room for the anointing. In other words, she built the very doorway where she would receive a prophetic word that she will be holding a baby at the same time the following year, the following season. In other words, she positioned herself to be blessed. I want to tell you, we can pray for open doors or we can put our faith into action and we can start making room for God to move. I want to ask you, have you made room for God to move? Have you made room for God in your home? Have you made room for God in your marriage? Have you made room for God in your finances, in your health? Have you made room for God? The Bible says, and I'm going to conclude with this. The Bible says that the following year, just as Elijah said, she conceived and she gave birth to a baby boy. In other words, she became pregnant with a promise from God. 
when she made room for God. That's powerful. When she made room for God, she became pregnant with a promise from God. In other words, when you and I start making room for God, we become pregnant with promises from God. And we give birth to those promises and they manifest in our lives. Child of God, it's time that we make room for God, not just in our own personal lives, in our communities, in our churches, in our nation. We need to make room for God to move. I love what happened over these last two weeks. What we've experienced is devastating. What we have seen with our own eyes is heartbreaking. But we've also seen how the church is rising up from the ashes. And it's not a denomination and it's not a church building. No, it is a movement. It's a group of people that is saying we need to call out to God. We are making room for God to move. We are making room for God to move on social media platforms with live Facebook feeds like this. We are making room for God. And where we make room for God, we become pregnant with purpose. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, you will receive faith when you listen to the word of God. This woman heard a promise. She became pregnant with the promise and she gave birth to that promise. Amen. Make room for him. Make room for him and he will move. Place a demand on the anointing. Become urgent for him and you will see God move in your life. Amen. Come let us pray. Father God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I come to you with my brothers and sisters that are watching right now live on Facebook. Live on this channel Lord Father God on YouTube. And Lord I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would show us where we need to evict something. Where we need to evict things that are a grievance unto you, an abomination unto you, so that you can come into our lives. Show us where we can make room for you. Show us where we need to change. Do a work within us, O Lord, that we may reflect Jesus Christ in this dark time. That we might be light in darkness. Forgive us, Lord, where we have become familiar with you. Lord, starting with me, forgive me. Have mercy upon us. But help us, Lord, Father God. Help us to walk the straight and narrow path. To follow you wholeheartedly. And not only that, to habitate with you. To commune with you. To spend time with you. I pray right now, Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you bless every brother and sister that is watching, Lord, that you would show them strategically how to position themselves to be blessed. Lord, show them, Lord, how to become positioned to be blessed so that you can move in their lives and so that they can testify about the glory of God. I pray, Lord, for your hand to be upon every single person right now that's watching. And I pray, Lord, Father God, Come into our midst. Do a work in our midst so that we will be able to testify about the glory of God. We want to make room for you. I want to make room for you. I want to make room for you, my Father. Move in our lives. You are so welcome. Right there where you are, if you agree with me in this prayer right now, just say, Lord, move in my life. Move in my life. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our homes. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our churches. You are welcome in our businesses. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our communities. Move. We welcome you in this nation of South Africa. Move. We need you. We need you. We are urgent for you. We are urgent. We are desperate for you to move. I pray this all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to ask you right now, you that is watching, if you know your life is not right with God, or if you've grown lukewarm in your faith, or if you've never given your life to God, this is your opportunity to give your heart to Jesus. I want to lead you in a prayer, and it's called the prayer of salvation. The prayer of salvation is based upon Romans chapter 10 verse 9, which says, If you confess with your lips and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. I want to tell you, you cannot work for salvation. You cannot bring any performance unto God for salvation. It is freely given unto you through the cross of Calvary. 
And if you say, Pastor, I want to make right with God, I know I'm not right with God. And if I had to die today, I'm not sure where I would go. I want to give you that assurance. The Bible says you need to confess. And the Bible says you need to believe in your heart. So if you are serious about this and you say, Pastor, yes, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me right there where you are. Don't focus on me. Focus on God. And say these words. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me in your blood. Set me free, Jesus. I believe you died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. And I believe you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Give me a passion for the lost. Give me a hunger for the things of God. And give me a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I declare I am saved. I declare I'm born again. And I declare I'm on my way to heaven. Because I've got Jesus in my heart. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I believe you've received the free gift of salvation. Get into a church. You need to have a shepherd over you. There's no such thing as being a lone ranger in the kingdom of God. Who is your shepherd? Where is your church? You need to be planted. Where you are planted, you can bring forth fruit. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, Do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. I want to ask you, my brother and my sister, do you believe in the scripture? So if you believe in the scripture and you believe what God says is true, then you need to obey the scripture. Do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. Make sure you committed, submitted somewhere. And not only that, take time to read the Bible on a daily basis. Start with one chapter a day. It doesn't have to be complicated. Start with just praying a little bit every single day. And as you pray and as you start spending time praying and just talking to God, just communing with God, guess what's going to happen? Later on, you're just going to keep going deeper and the time is going to be increasing. And later it's going to go from 15 minutes to 20 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour. I want to tell you, when I first came to salvation, I started by praying only 20 minutes a day. And I want to tell you, it significantly increased. And it's now not just sometimes one time a day, several times through the day. So, put God first place and you will see God bless you in ways that you could not even imagine, ask or even think. Are you ready to be blessed? I believe you are going to be blessed today and I want to pronounce or let me say declare a blessing over you right there where you are. I want you to get ready to be blessed. I want to declare this blessing over you. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So in other words, we can manifest life or death in what we say or what we declare. And I want to manifest the blessings of God in your life by declaring these blessings over you. And all you have to do is just say, Amen. Amen. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that you are blessed with God's supernatural wisdom, wisdom and you've got clear direction for your life. If you believe it, say Amen. I declare that you are blessed with creativity, with courage, and with ability, and with abundance in Jesus' name. I declare that you are blessed with a strong will, with self-control and self-discipline in Jesus' name. I declare that you are blessed with a great family, with good friends, with good health, and with faith, favor, and fulfillment in Jesus' name. I declare that you are blessed with success. I declare that you are blessed with supernatural strength. I declare that you are blessed with promotion, increase. I declare that you are blessed with divine protection in the name of Jesus. I declare that you are blessed with an obedient heart and with a positive outlook on life in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, just type Amen. Say Amen, Pastor. I declare that any curse that has ever been spoken over you or any negative evil word that has ever come against you is broken right now in Jesus' name. 
I declare that you are blessed in the city. I declare that you are blessed in the country. I declare you are blessed when you go in. And I declare that you are blessed when you come out. And I declare that everything you put your hands to do will prosper and succeed for God is with you in Jesus' name. And if you receive it, just say amen. Right there where you are, just say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend with me over this live Facebook feed. It has been great to share the word of God with you. It has been great to pray with you. Please remember, Wednesday night live, 7 o'clock, right here on Facebook. I'm going to be sharing the word of God with you again. If you're going to go offline, God bless you. Please take the time, click share, share the word of God. Let's get the word of God out as far as possible. Right now, I want to ask you, if you need a prayer request, I want to pray for you right now. So please, quickly pop a prayer request. I'm going to take some time to pray for you. People are going to go offline. That is fine. But I want to take time to pray for every single person that needs prayer right now. And we're going to stand in agreement. Maybe you say, Pastor, I don't want to do it on a public platform. That's fine. Send me a private message. My number is on the Facebook page. You can just pop me a WhatsApp or send me a message in the Messenger, Facebook Messenger. And I'll take the time to pray for you. Yeah, we've got already a prayer request. Uh, Renee Stoffbach says, please pray for my mom again. Was discharged with bad bed sores after being admitted to a provincial hospital. She's tired and has a lot of pain. Okay, we prayed for Renee's mother two weeks ago. We're going to pray for her again. Come on, let's stand in agreement right now. We as brothers and sisters in Christ, let's stand in agreement. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord Father God, that you would be with Renee's mother right now. Lord, you know the situation. You know what's happening in her life. And we pray, Lord, that you would strengthen her. We pray for the peace of God to be in her heart. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless her right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for divine healing to take place on her body in her body and i pray lord father god just do a divine work in her right now we lift up our sister to you we lift up renee's mother to you and we pray for your hand to be upon her in jesus name strengthen her comfort her counsel her holy spirit we pray in the mighty name of jesus amen renee we believe in together with you that this that your mom will be blessed and that she will recover amen as I'm going to read the prayer requests, I'm also going to greet several people. I want to quickly say welcome to, again, if I have greeted you, I want to greet you again. I'm sure you don't mind if I greet you again. Yaku Willifid, welcome, my brother. It's good to see that you're online. Jody Kriya, once again, my brother. God bless you. Anneke van Veik, welcome. Mandy Mayer, welcome. Madre Potiga, welcome. Adeline Stein, I trust that you are well. We are praying for you. We're praying for your family. And we believe God is going to do a work in your family. Welcome to whoops, welcome to Beryl Browning. It's good to see that you're online. Welcome, Pastor Avon. Welcome, Zia Gina. It's good to see that you're online. Gavin Patrick, my brother. It's good to see that you're online. Moshe Nell, welcome. Nulin and Fred Knipp, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Belinda Nell, welcome. Michael Buerta, welcome. Welcome, Carl and Ruline. It's good to see that you're both online. Joey Willifeed, welcome. Lizelle Bates, welcome. I'm sure I greeted you. Lisa Kriya, welcome. Welcome, Pastor Yolanda and Gert. It's good to see that you guys are online. Madeleine Nokia, welcome. Madeleine Riley, Riley. I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> Welcome. It's good to see that you're online. Welcome, Henry Bridger. It's good to see that you're online. Welcome, Carmen Fori. It's good to see that you're online. Welcome, Elian Kriya. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Patricia Pretorius, welcome. It's good to see that you're online. Marty Schizzarotto, welcome. Sarah Siebritz, welcome. It's good to see that you're online. Lente Fori, welcome. Welcome to everybody that's watching. Wow, it's awesome. Thank you so much for all of you that's taken the time to watch. Amen. It's so good to see everybody online. Mari Debeer, welcome. It's good to have you online. Amen. Tasha Detoy, welcome. Welcome to all of you. Amen. Yolani Buerta, welcome. Jean Schizzarotto, welcome. My cousin. Hester 
the rue welcome maligi maliga moodly welcome my brother it's good to see that you're online valerie vandenberg welcome amen amen i'm getting a lot of thank yous for the word thank you for every message i appreciate it amen amen okay please pray for our trip to Whitbank. Carl. okay father god in the name of jesus i pray right now that you would be with carl and raleen as they travel to Whitbank. in jesus name i pray lord that you would protect them and that you would bring them safely back home in the name of jesus amen amen facebook is giving me a little bit of challenges right now i said belief but for quibus Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Quibus Stain right now. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over his body. We rebuke and renounce you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, over Quibus Stain, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, Father God, for the healing that has already been given through the cross of Calvary. I thank you, Lord, for touching his lungs right now. We command his body to come in line with God's word. And I pray, Lord, that those that are watching over him there in the hospital, Lord, that you, Lord, would lead them. That you would give them wisdom. I pray that you would comfort and counsel Quibus right now. I pray that you would comfort and counsel his wife, his children in the name of Jesus. And I pray for your hand of blessing to be upon the Stain family. Touch Quibus. We all agree to it right now in Jesus name. Amen. We need to pray for Hester LaRue. She's not doing well. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for Hester LaRue, my grandmother. I pray, Lord, that you would touch her. I pray, Lord, that you would encourage her. I rebuke and renounce every sickness, every attack upon her body, her mind, her emotions in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you would comfort her, that you would just surround her in your love, and that your hand of blessing would be upon her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for Avon Browning. Beryl Browning Ask, can we please pray for Avon Browning? Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know the situation. You know what's happening. Lord, I pray right now for divine healing and breakthrough in Avon Browning's body in the name of Jesus. We bind you, Satan, over his body in the name of Jesus. We rebuke and renounce you over his life in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, for a touch for Avon Browning right now in Jesus' name. We agree to it right now over this live feed in the name of jesus and i thank you lord where two or more agree to anything so shall it be and we receive right now healing encouragement strength that comes through the cross for avon browning in jesus name amen lisa Creer says please pray for us for brahm herbst and his brother edmund vandenberg that's in hospital for complete healing Father God, we pray right now for Bram Herbst and Edmund van der Berg. We lift them up to you. Lord, you know their situation. You know what's happening. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke an affliction that has come upon their bodies. In the name of Jesus, we say, Satan, leave them alone right now in Jesus' name. And we receive healing given through the cross of Calvary right now for Bram and Edmund in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Lisa, we're standing in agreement. We're standing in agreement. Beryl, we are standing in agreement. Adeline, we are standing in agreement. Amen. Just quickly going through all these comments. Amen. Sorry, if I do not read a comment, I will take the time to pray afterwards. Um, sometimes Facebook just throws out a lot of comments, so you miss sometimes the prayer requests. But please know I will take the time to pray. Amen. Um, Kobe Steinfort, welcome. It's good to see that you're online. Salomi Hennen, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Amen. Amen. Yes. Joey, we, we believe for full healing and restoration for Pastor Avon. Amen. Amen. Madeleine Nordea says, Ek wil so graag net wil dankie sê dat God ons gebede geantwoord en dat hy altyd daar is vir ons. I think we all need to do that. Let's just take the time to say thank you God that you are faithful. Thank you Lord that you have not forsaken us, that you've been gracious unto us. So let's just take the time to say thank you. Father God in the name of Jesus. Lord we want to say thank you for all that you have done. Ah Lord I want to admit I'm more blessed than what I deserve to be blessed. 
And it's all because of you. It's not because of me. It's all because of you. Thank you for how good you've been towards all of us. We might not have everything we want, but we've got more than what we need oftentimes. We've got a roof over our head. We've got clothes on our back. We've got data to look at live Facebook services and listen to the word of God. Lord, what a blessing that is to listen, to hear the word of God. When there's so much people that can't hear the word of God or anymore or in a comatose state or are disabled. And yeah, we are able to listen to the word of God. We are healthy. We are strong. We are blessed. Lord, you are good. You are good and your mercies truly endure forever. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you are. Thank you for the good God that you are. Thank you for how you've carried us through this COVID-19 period, through these lockdowns. Thank you, Lord, Father God, that you make a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you, Lord, that you comfort us in our moments of hurt and disappointment. Thank you, Lord, that you have restored us. You've redeemed us. Thank you, Lord, that you pick us up. Thank you, Lord, that you're always there, that when we cry out to you, we can sense and experience your presence. Thank you. And Lord, we just this morning want to recognize your goodness, your faithfulness in our midst. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Gavin Patrick, I see you online, my brother. Welcome. Kwebi Steinfart says, As a belief bit for my Buddha, Dion Halberg, for sy gezondheid, sy longe, en vir die tumor in sy oor. We need to pray for Dion Halberg, for his lungs, and he's got a tumor. Let's pray for him right now. Father God, we lift up Dion Halberg to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you would touch his body, that you would touch his lungs. In Jesus' name, we rebuke the tumor right now in his eye. In the name of Jesus. Sorry, Lord, in his ear, in the name of Jesus. We rebuke that tumor on his body. In Jesus' name, we receive the healing given through the cross of Calvary right now for Dion Halberg in the name of Jesus. Amen. Quibi on stem psalm for volmaakte geneesing for Dion. Amen. Amen. Just want to make sure that there's no more prayer requests. Mandy Mayer says, please pray for anxiety and fear. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for Mandy Mayer. I bring her before you, my sister. I rebuke anxiety and fear over her life in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen her. I pray, Lord, that you'd fill her with joy. I pray, Lord, that you would sense your peace right now in Jesus' name. My sister, I feel, I sense God is saying he's going to take away all the worry and concern. He's going to take away everything that has oppressed your emotions. And he's going to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. You're just going to sense his goodness. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed, Mandy, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, it seems like that's all that we have for today. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch. Thank you so much for taking the time to share the word of God. May you be blessed on this Sunday. May you be blessed in all that you do. And I know that God is going to be with you. As long as you keep him first, as long as you make room for him, you're going to see the hand of God. Amen. Amen. One more prayer request came through. Jody Kriya, please pray for wisdom for our president. We need to. He's got a presidential speech that he's got to do tonight. Let's pray for wisdom and let's pray for our beautiful country of South Africa. And then we will just close. Father God, we come right now to you and we bring our president Cyril Ramaphosa unto you. We pray, Lord, Father God, that wisdom will prevail in cabinet, in parliament, in the president's heart, in Jesus name. Bless him with the spirit of wisdom. Put your desires, your thoughts, your ambitions in his heart. That he will be able to lead us as a nation in a way, Lord Father God, that is godly and that is honorable. I pray, Lord, not only to bless our president with wisdom, but bless the next generation with wisdom. Let there be leaders that rise up in a time such as this. That Lord Father God will do 
what you have called them to do in Jesus name. That will stand on the word of God. That will stand for truth. That will be filled with the spirit of God. Lord raise up an army. A generation that will be sold out to you in this nation. So that we will see revival and experience revival in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you Jody. And I just want to say welcome to Frick van Feed. And it's good to see that you're online. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. This is me, Dominique, Pastor Dominique. I'm signing out. I'll see you all Wednesday night at 7. And whatever the lockdown announcement is going to be, we will communicate on Facebook when will be our live services. God bless.